welcome to the webinar today we have a the eminent clinician and i must say sri lanka dental association is uh, indebted to uh, commonwealth dental association uh, professor dyd samaravikrama uh, has been gracious enough to um, uh, provide us with a eminent uh, uh, clinician so we have with us uh, dr vishwapurna sengutan a well known academician as well as a clinician he is currently the head of the clinical services and head of orthodontics in oman dental college in muscat he holds a visiting associate professor uh, degree uh, position at european dental college in dubai and uh, on top of that he is having a private practice in cecil islands he is a consultant orthodontist with lot of uh, Uh, uh credentials to his name and uh, he'll be talking to us uh, regarding the multidisciplinary approach in orthodontic treatment so without taking too much of his time i would like to uh, invite dr vishwa to uh, start the webinar Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Streamer. It was a pleasure uh, meeting you all in the meeting of Zoom, and I would like to thank the Sri Lankan Dental Association for giving this opportunity to give this uh, lecture. And I would like to thank Professor Sam because he is the one who told me like uh, it is uh, much needed over there. So that's why I am here. So today we are going to talk, and uh, at the later end we might little have a uh, little Q and A session. related to this multiple display approach in orthodontics yeah so that's what we are going to do today so happy diwali to all of you there is no much celebration during covid but still uh, there is nothing wrong in eating sweet at home and uh, relax over days at uh, is locked down covid period yeah and this lecture is a part of a common dental association so uh, along with which promotes the oral health in uh, commonwealth countries like sri lanka india and includes another uh, 48 plus countries in the world as this is one of the part of the lecture associated with this common dental association and i've been to your country beautiful country i've been a lot of times uh, but i love staying in nurelia which is my favorite place in uh, sri lanka and uh, the hot and plains i really love visiting that place with all the natural beauties so which is a very beautiful national park which is well maintained there in sri lanka i love this place always so these are some of the pictures which i have done uh, during my visit so this is me all about me uh, i done my bds and mds from india i done my mds from uh, one of the very famous orthodontists by name dr sarasiv shetty at babuji dental college Uh, so after which i traveled around a lot of places i hold a couple of royal college degrees so at the moment i do and teach and live in uh, oman oman as a head of clinical services as well as the head of orthodontics so and plus i have a visiting practice in seychelles island which make me to travel uh, uh, every four weeks once i have a beautiful practice there so which i am doing it for the last uh, 12 years plus so that's what i um, that's my whole about it a special thanks to my mentor professor sam professor sam visits oman for almost like 10 years plus uh, i worked very closely with him in uh, in terms of uh, assessment as well as the clinical role is a beautiful uh, professor with a lot of knowledge and uh, his experience in the field is not even my age he is a very very wonderful man to discuss and collaborate with and a special thanks to him because he has uh, uh, did lot of uh, help in terms of developing the program uh, in oman dental college uh, even though yeah, i am being an orthodontist i i have i stick to my areas of expertise i don't do all the work uh, i have only four roles which i like doing it so one main role is uh, the training program till now for uh, almost of close to uh, 18 orthodontists i have been trained to become an amorto membership program from bar college of edinburgh I do a lot of interceptive orthodontics, which is my area of specialty. Just yes, treating the young child, and uh, I work on a lot of surgical orthodontics. So, in Oman population is having a lot of surgical uh, malocclusions, 
so we do a lot of surgical cases as well as into adult orthodontics. That is my area of expertise. And uh, I would say the orthodontics is like kind of playing a chess game because every move matters whenever you play with your uh, tooth movement. And again, every tooth movement has a certain reaction to that. So if you don't play your coins well, so end of the day, you're going to have a problem in your orthodontic treatment. So your treatment doesn't mean like you put your wire, put your right point, treatment is not over. So your treatment is always in continuous process. So which means every stage you might need to end up in evaluating them very well uh, before deciding to the next stage. Yeah? So that's how we can uh, define the role of an orthodontist in the field of dentistry. And this is a very good saying. It is better to solve one problem five different ways than to solve a five problem in one way. And uh, if, if you ask any orthodontist to come out with a treatment plan for a one single mole occlusion, you end up in getting a 10 different ways of treating them, or maybe sometimes 11. Uh, the other orthodontist might propose two ways of treating a mole occlusion. So which makes orthodontics always an interesting field to do. And again, it is challenging to uh, treat the patients according to their needs. Yeah. So that's Oman. Oman is a very beautiful uh, country. It has the longest uh, coastline around of 2,300 square kilometers. And uh, that's our college. At the moment, it is only an undergraduate program. Uh, but I do only an uh, immortal training program, which we run it uh, exclusively for the last uh, couple of years. And uh, we take only two students per year because we run it very, very straight. We, uh, we choose whom to join for the program uh, because we run it very, very tight so that we don't have any failures at the end of third year, yeah. So, and plus, as uh, Sriman was mentioning, I do have a practice in the island, beautiful island called Seychelles, which is very, very, uh, same like Sri Lanka, disclosed, uh, located on the Indian Ocean. So, uh, it's a very nice country to visit for the holidays. Uh, just back to the business again, there are four R's in orthodontics, which I strongly believe every orthodontist or every practitioner need to apply whenever you're seeing your patients. So, which is your right diagnosis. Diagnosis is always a very vital role in deciding your uh, treatment plan. You don't just make a call of your diagnosis by just looking at the patient for 30 seconds. It's a process which involves sometime a day or sometime a do, uh, two days. Again, you need to look into all kinds of diagnostics and investigation to come at a uh, right diagnosis, as well as at the right age, what age you want to treat your patients and the right kind of an appliances, which is very important because most of the time with the current scenarios, People are tend to choose an appliances because it is often uh, technology based, but the technology can be used, but it's, uh, the human brain should uh, be better than the technology rather than the other way around. And uh, you always need to write to choose your patients correctly because most of the time people tend to uh, choose the wrong patient for a wrong appliance, then you won't get your results. And it is not mandatory for all appliances will uh, suit for all the patients. So it can vary and uh, at what age you are seeing every patient, uh, it can change. So, so this, is, this is, should be your uh, success line whenever you are seeing your patient, your right diagnosis, right age and the right appliance and uh, uh, right patients. Dentistry has come very far from the year what we have been passed out from the year of BDS and do your MDS and masters. It has, it's uh, keep changing, evolving over a period of long time. So which end up in creating many specialties. We know like a lot of specialties are increasing every year. And we can see because of the lot of awareness, there is no problem in the information nowadays available for the patient. The question is how well the information can be used for our advantage is the uh, question we need to always ask for ourselves. The present era, we know dentistry is considered to be a science and art and science, we know all proven theory and art is a creative thinking apart from your skills. The face of orthodontics also has changed since its inception with patients seeking treatment at different age groups. We know that now we, uh, you, you treat a, there was a concept before where you treat only the child. So now we treat every single age group for your patient. It's not mandatory uh, or, or I would say everybody is affordable uh, to have a treatment at the different age group uh, with the development of your science. Traditionally, orthodontists treated mole occlusion that were dental or skeletal in origin, taking off the full growth potential. It was entirely a unidisciplinary therapy. So while you, you wait for the mole occlusion to get established and you treat them, which benefited them as a guardian of the growing phase. The philosophy was to catch them young and treat them young. So that was the concept behind it. 
But treating an adult patient, you have a uh, beautiful advantage of having a full competent of dentition. You have a patient sometime with a gingival and a periodontal problem or rap, or sometime you get a patient with a good alveolar bone support. So this is the advantage of seeing a patient with an adult, but you have a lot of drawbacks whenever you see your adult malocclusion because the maintenance of hygiene won't be very good sometimes. You might be having a lot of missing or an extracted tooth, which quite commonly you see at the young adult patient when they approach for a treatment. Sometimes you see a pathological migration of the teeth, severe bone loss, endodontically treated teeth, poor gingival and periodontal health, skeletal imbalances, or sometimes you end up in having a mutilated malocclusion or a disaster malocclusion because the patient has been treated with the previous orthodontist very badly or the treatment is not completed. Either it is a fault of the patient side or it is a fault of an orthodontic side. You end up in uh, again retreating the patient for a better malocclusion. So I call it as a disaster malocclusion. Uh, it happens. So with, these are the problems you might come across with uh, the adult malocclusion cases. So now whenever, whenever I talk about the teamwork, it is a very nice graph to show how a teamwork looks like. But in reality, it is not going to happen. It's not so simple to get a team up from every single speciality uh, because of the fact, you know, because uh, you don't agree with what they say or uh, they don't agree with what you say. So this is, this is fine. There is nothing wrong in agree to disagree in life. Uh, it happens in your family. It will happen in your workplace. It happens uh, if you are a human. It's, uh, it's quite natural to have an... Uh, agree to disagree concept, but all the benefits should be moved towards the patient satisfaction or the to get a better treatment for the benefit of the patient. So what kind of a problem you might come across whenever we talk about the team approach or uh, the concept, what we can do is, this was developed to maximize the treatment result by optimizing the knowledge, skills, and experience of all discipline in dentistry and its associated field. The success of the interdisciplinary depends upon two, which is regimental sequencing and extensive communication. Uh, you need to plan really all these in well in advance. And uh, communication is an, uh, always an, uh, play a vital role in uh, getting a good result. Because this is where most of the time we, we tend to, uh, we assume, okay, what I speak, you understand, or what you think I can get it by looking at your eyes, it's not going to happen. So it's always better to get an effective communication uh, for the better benefit. So these two elements are very, very vital whenever you are uh, referring the cases between your uh, specialties. Yeah. The challenges, what are the challenges you come across? Uh, most common challenge is the speciality bias because uh, we don't, uh, sometimes we feel like, okay, this guy is more superior than a surgeon, is more superior than an orthodontist, or an orthodontist is more superior than an endodontist or vice versa, it goes on. So specialty bias is very common challenge, as you will see. And second is an insufficient communication. And uh, third, we have an haphazard organization among its three key members. So this is, this is all the challenges you see uh, every single time uh, in, in, in terms of roughing your cases. And again, these are the, again, challenges you see even in your day-to-day -day, uh, practices. So what leads to a mutilated molar occlusion? So imagine you have a, your patient is having a loss of one of the lower molars. So you can expect the upper six, we can call it as a useless tooth because it is not going to get on an uh, occlusion, which can lead to supra eruption of the upper molars, or it can lead to distal uh, mesial migration of your lower molars. So which again lead to the over eruption of the upper, which can lead to the exposed roots and the lower, the same way can go for a mesial migration, which can lead to a uh, loss of tooth. And uh, when do you see this? The patient can present to us in any one of these stages. So this is a common uh, problems whenever you see your uh, adult cases. So you should have your knowledge and your clinical equipment should be good enough to uh, tackle whenever you're seeing the patient in any one of these conditions, yeah. So now, who got the beautiful smile? The humans or the herbivores or omnivores or carnivores? So of course not the humans in terms of evolution. There is no much changes has been happened in terms of the arrangement of teeth for a tiger, for a chimp, or even for an, uh, any other animal species because the teeth has been very extensively used by them even till today. 
uh, their diet pattern is not much changed when compared to us. So the question, this is completely uh, the question we need to ask ourselves. So there may be because of 1920, the industrial revolution, which lead to for us to eat the sugar-based and a processed food and acidic food lead to this kind of a malocclusion. So which is we need to revisit ourselves to find a way how we can able to uh, avoid the future generation uh, to have this kind of food to hard or make sure they chew their jaws to get a better arrangement of your teeth. And uh, just on a funny note, medical science has made a such tremendous progress, but there is hardly a healthy human left. So we know that nowadays, so where everybody is in some kind of drugs and uh, we, we cannot blame on this, but there is a lot of industrial revolution which can lead to this, yeah. So just back to the first part of our uh, case presentation, uh, this is, I'm going to show you a couple of series of cases in relation to ortho and a surgical relationship. So, which is uh, uh, of case oriented. I, uh, uh, I'm not very sure I'm addressing a lot of ortho and here. So I made it very simple in terms of presenting out with the pre and a post treatment. You might not see a lot of numbers, which most of the orthodontists expect in terms of cephalometric changes. Of course, all the cases has been uh, treated in terms of the regular parameters. Uh, but here for the presentation purpose and make it into pre and a post treatment. So that's why we do it. So in Oman, to be frank with you, we have a very good team of a uh, surgeon. So which help us to create, uh, which help us to treat all kind of skeletal imbalance. And the Oman population is quite common. We see with the class three cases a lot and class two cases a lot. And uh, the beauty of all these cases uh, luckily, the government does all these treatments for free for the surgical cases, free over here. So the patient, I, it hardly took us maybe like 20 minutes to uh, tell the patient, convince the patient we need a surgeon. So we don't spend much time on convincing any of the surgical cases in the college because most of the patients are aware of it and they are happy to undergo the, the minor surgical procedures for their better occlusion. Yeah. So the aesthetics, which is one of the prime concern for an adult who is seeking the orthodontic treatment. So, and although the adult malocclusion are mostly mutilated, their expectation are very high towards an ideal aesthetic outcome. Therefore, in non-growing adult, it is often impossible to achieve a significant improvement in facial aesthetics with orthodontics alone. So you need to be very well defined yourself. Don't expect in treating every single patient you walk in your office. You have your own limitations. Sometimes you need to get an opinion of your uh, own colleague or specialist, how we can able to treat every single patient. So that is, uh, that is, that is one of the good part uh, of being, or uh, I would say it is one of the good character of a clinician, knowing your own limitations. Yeah, so knowing your own limitations, that is a key factor. So therefore, orthodontics combined with surgery is the only way to treat this malocclusion. Based on the skeletal discrepancy, the judgment has been made and how we can able to correct the malocclusion. Sometime most of the uh, orthodontic uh, surgical cases will require a kind of an uh, orthodontic uh, treatment. We call them as a pre-surgical orthodontics, basically trying to put the teeth in their proper uh, skeletal base so that we can able to uh, surgical correction without any kind of an uh, uh, dental interference or an occlusal interference to get a better occlusion. Yeah. So that's what we do. So now this you can see it one uh, young Omani gentleman, so 19 years old, uh, six months. So we can see he got a classic features of a class three with an uh, incisor relationship as well as on a skeletal base. And he got a little bit of posterior cross bite and uh, you're very moderate crowding in the upper and the lower. So the proposed treatment plan for this patient to treat upper and lower, uh, decompensate, put the teeth on a proper skeletal base and uh, we thought of doing a bisal surgery for this patient, so which is an upper six millimeter of a maxillary advancement and a three millimeter of a mandibular setback. And the seven was in completely of a scissor bite, so which we decided to extract at the end of the treatment. So now you can see his extra oral features, which is a classic patient with a long face. You can see the, uh, the negative step on his uh, upper lip and the uh, dark buccal corridors. So the classic features of the patient, and you can see a very uh, uh, molar augmentation features of the uh, maxilla as well. So that's his intraoral photo. So you can see classic case. Again, there is a uh, compensation has been up, uh, happened on the uh, lower incisors. It is kind of a little retroclined. 
So the objective was to keep all the teeth on an aligned place, followed by that uh, for a surgical correction. So that is a cephalo matrix and a dental panoramic radiograph. So all suggest the patient is in surgical case. And uh, we have a very strong rule which we follow in the college here. So we allow the patient to make a, uh, we, they participate in our treatment plan, but uh, we don't do what patient asking for. We do what is best for the patient. So that has been uh, practiced very widely. And sometimes if the patient is not willing to undergo a surgical correction, we do sometimes refuse the patients. And we always refer it to their choice of where they want to go undergo treatment, we allow that. Uh, but we control the total treatment for, for the patient. So that's how we work. And I strongly believe in uh, keeping it that way so that it is easier to uh, have a better result. And of course, uh, just a basic orthodontics, not much of mechanics involved in this case. So the upper and low lower 49 wire followed by that and uh, the change of wires and the space has been closed uh, with the 17, 17 uh, 25 and progressive wires. And this is a kind of a uh, uh, pre-surgical photograph. And the patient has been subjected for the surgery, uh, both upper and the lower jaw. So the upper jaw has been done a leaf root one with a maxillary advancement of six millimeters. And the lower was a mandibular surgery, which is again a BSSO mandibular setbacks. And the plates and screws has been placed on the patient. So the same patient, which is after the, the post-surgical correction, so, and you can see the, this is the same picture of the patient after the debond. So now again, you can see the post-treatment of the extra oral photos and the pre and the post comparison of the same patient, how the, you can see the well-balanced face, uh, the facial proportions are seems fine now. So the same goes on the upper and the lower, again, the pre and the post uh, uh, intra oral photos of the patients. So this is a skeletally uh, imbalanced patient, so which of course you need to intervene and help of a surgeon to uh, do your case. So the next patient again, you have an again a series of cases. I always present in a way where you have like a minimum of three or four patients in every, uh, every malocclusions. It is easier for you to uh, get a better understanding. So again, you have a 19 years old Monikai, so which is having the same class features of a uh, skeletal class range relationship on a skeletal base. And uh, his was a little decompensated. So we, we did a non-extraction again for this patient. So we proposed only a maxillary advancement. You can see that the chin seems fine when compared to the, or we can see the divisions of the face is quite fine when compared to the, the frontal one third, the facial one third. So again, we, uh, we followed the uh, MBT bracket prescriptions. So this is uh, intra uh, the extra oral features of the patient. Again, classic signs of an extra oral findings. So that is his intra photos. You can see it is a kind of a not much of a uh, dental compensation has been happened. But if you want to subject any patient for a surgical correction, it is mandatory you have at least in six millimeters of reverse overjet, which is going to help the surgeons to uh, do a beautiful correction of your uh, 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 maxilla. So again, the pre and the, the pre supplementaries and the OPG. So we can see that. So the, the basic treatment has been started with the initial wires. So, and as you, as you can see, the progress, the reverse OJ is getting better and better. So on a 1925, it is much better. And this is a pre-surgical photograph of a patient. So then again, the patient has been subjected only for an, uh, one jaw surgery. So by the single jaw surgery, which is a maxillary advancement of six millimeters. So and again, the screw has been placed and that is the uh, post-surgical photo, immediate post-surgical photos. Mm, this is after a month of evaluation, the patient had a very short post surgical corrections. So, and this is the uh, post completion of the cases mm, after the orthodontic treatment. And uh, you can see that uh, the changes, especially on the, the middle third of the face, you can see good changes, which of course you can notice it very nicely on his pre and uh, post extra oral photos. And again, it, uh, it goes on a pre and uh, post uh, intra oral photos as well. So this, this is again, you have a uh, classic case. Uh, this is the third of a series. Again, you can see a patient with them. This is a little, we, see, we saw two patients, but both are related to one. One is a by jaw, other is a single jaw. So this gentleman is uh, 18 years old, but this is a little tricky case. You can see it very nicely. 
uh, where uh, we thought of decompensating and getting a better occlusion, which you are going to see it in a minute. Uh, this boy doesn't have any kind of an uh, occlusion at all. He got an occlusion only at the molar. So you can see these extra features. And again, is intraoral, you can see that there is no much, there is no much occlusion. Occlusion is only at the head. Of course, he had a difficulty in eating because there is no occlusion at all. So we thought of doing a reverse orthotics, which is just extractions of the uppers and the extraction of the lower. So it can vary between, ideally speaking, you're supposed to extract uh, the fives or the fours so that you can able to mesialize your uh, lower molars to a proper class three. So the patient has been, uh, Again, you can see there on a cephalometric and an OPG, the features of a class thing. So he was been extracted, subjected with an upper uh, braces, followed by the lower braces. So the concept was to worsen the malocclusion or try to get a malocclusion, how it is supposed to be on a skeletal base. So he had a treatment of close to uh, one, one year and two months. So that is his uh, pre-surgical photograph. And the surgery has been done only on the maxilla. So it is a lever advancement with it of close to eight millimeter of an advancement and a plate and a screw has been placed. So, and this is the post-surgical of the patient uh, after a month of surgery, yeah. So you can see here the uh, good settling of occlusion, the midline matching and uh, whatever the goals you are talking in terms of an address occlusion has been uh, possibly achieved for this case. So, and again, you can see the pre and the post so now uh, to see it, uh, this, is, this is what we are uh, talking about in terms of uh, uh, putting a patient on an ideal line of treatment. Most of them might argue you can be uh, treating with the help of a non-extraction by application of the screws and everything. But we, I tend to uh, try to put most of the time in an ideal treatment plan. So as long as the patient is uh, willing to agree for that so that your result can be often stable. Sometimes you end up in getting a, a mutilated molar occlusion, which is sometimes it is very uh, hard to see that sometimes you see it very rarely or you see most commonly, I don't know about uh, in Sri Lanka, how many of you are getting a patient who has been uh, previously or wrongly treated for an uh, orthodontic treatment and you end up in uh, correcting the malocclusion. So now this patient has been presented with a lot of uh, skeletal class three base by looking at it and uh, got a skeletal class three incisor relationship. Uh, she doesn't have an occlusion at all because the orthodontist was tend to extract only the the upper uh, foes and try to retract and end up in a very uh, disaster malocclusion. That's what she came out with the malocclusion. Uh, this was the case I was uh, reviewed and supervised in uh, uh, Dubai. So the patient has been, uh, the treatment plan was to camouflage it. That is the only thing we can do it because uh, her upper four has been extracted in the previous orthodontic treatment. So the plan was to extract the lower premolars. So try to reinforce the anchorage uh, on adding up the second molars. So and again, uh, we followed the, uh, the MDT mechanics. Uh, uh, I don't know whether how many of orthodontists is here, but Dr. Bennett is a very gentleman. I had an opportunity to work with him for almost like five years with him. So he always believes in uh, finishing the case good. So most of our patients also, we spend a lot of time on finishing and detailing. So, and I being an orthodontist in the field for the last 15, 16 years, I always believe the, the result of an orthodontic treatment can be evaluated post orthodontically maybe after five or six years. So then uh, we can be happy to proud of yourself what you have been expected or been achieved or not. So, so this you can see that very nicely. This is how our malocclusion was very sadly, uh, which is a mutilated case. The upper four has been extracted and uh, they treated and they messed up the whole malocclusion. So the plan was, you can see that the missing fours and as well as the lower was very fine with that. So you can see that supplementary as well as an OPG, you have a couple of fillings on the OPGs and uh, you can, the patient is on a skeletal class three pattern. So the plan was to start the lower arch first so that you can able to reverse the bite. So then slowly add up the upper jaw. So the of lower four has been extracted. The simple mechanics has been followed. So we, the, the patient has been put on a class three elastics. The patient has been jumped. The patient has been kind enough to have the elastic for a while. And uh, you can see the post, uh, uh, result of the patient uh, from the difference between the CR and CO. And you can see the nice balance on the uh, facial profile where you can see the, the reverse overjet and the, the lip prominence is fine. Of course, uh, she is not happy to smile always. I don't know why. You can see it, her, her smile pattern is not changed much. But she got a tremendous uh, 
change in her uh, malocclusions, how she was presented and how the, the treatment has been completed for her. So you, uh, so what I do in my practice is this is something a kind of a very, uh, I don't know whether you call it as a smart move or an idiot move. Uh, we take up the cases if the patient is going to stay with us for only two years. If the patient, any of the orthodontic treatment patient coming for a consultation, if they say like, look, I'm going to, because again, Oman, a lot of people come and go. It's not a permanent stay for everybody in Oman. So I always ask the patient, are you going to stay in Oman for a period of two years? If so, we take up the case. Otherwise, we most of the time we refuse uh, treating the patient if they are not going to uh, complete the treatment with us. So it is, uh, it is my way of doing treatment. Maybe you won't agree with that, but that's how I work. So that makes me happy to treat one patient and finish a patient rather than just uh, uh, writing a lot of referral letters to travel around the world and you end up in paying everywhere to an orthodontist. So I don't uh, do that. So now this is very interesting case. Uh, in Oman, you know, like we get patients with, uh, generally you treat a family, you stay with the family. That's how I say you can be happy if you're because of the uh, cultural background. So in a family, at least you have like minimum of four or five children. So you get like five families with you, you're happy to be a dentist or an orthodontist to treat every single child. So now we can see that this is a sibling which came for our treatment with us. So nice way of uh, doing a timely approach of your uh, treatment for the cases. The top one is his uh, brother. So he was uh, close to 10 years or nine years age. And down is his sister, which is the classic of a skeletal class two division, two malnutrition, both top and bottom. Uh, the sister is come for the treatment, of course, not the brother, because brother is come for an accompanying along with his father. So when we see the sister, I was curious to ask, uh, see the, do a consultation for his brother to find out whether he is carried with his brother as well. And uh, as predicted, uh, he also got a mole occlusion. So what we did is we want to play around how nature can respond if you're treating them young and leave it and uh, see what kind of an uh, stable result we get it rather than uh, keeping the treating the patient for longer. So the patient we treated down below was an uh, all four uh, upper four extractions. And the boy, we thought of doing a simple non extraction just for a period of three months, level align and just debond and allow the nature to do the job. So that was a plan has been planned for that. So now this is, uh, this is an Omani female child. So 14 years old uh, with a class two incisor relationship with a class two skeletal base. And the mole occlusion is of course, it is uh, super complicated because of the upper arch crowding and the lower arch crowding. So we thought of doing a camouflage. So do only the upper premolar extractions, followed by that you are uh, the mechanics, whatever we used to align the tooth. So that's the extraoral photo of the patient. So then you have the intraoral photos of the patient. So the patient had a couple of RCTs has been done on the molar since the RCT was pretty fine. So I didn't want to disturb them. I just left as it is. So we did extraction, but we played with the mechanics very well. We are very slow in doing things. We didn't involve a lot of teeth at the initial part of the treatment. We want to do it slowly, allow the teeth to move on its own and create a space so that the, uh, the highly placed tooth can come on its own. So that's the mechanics we played on this child. So we just use a simple lace bags, try to pull them very slowly. So which is not part of your whole of your uh, fix it up line concept, top and bottom. And of course, the within switch pack because we want the incisor to flower on its own to get an ideal uh, incisor position. So again, you can see that the slowly the, the canine has come down by with the help of a simple lace back elastics on both the sides and the laterals in the canines. And we slowly started including the incisor tooth with the help of a rigid wire. This is again a simple mechanics where you try to do a piggyback of uh, using a night wire along with a heavy wire. So once it is aligned, so then we start up the bonding of the lower jaw. So lower, we didn't do much, just a simple alignment of the case. And this was the patient after we uh, did a completion of an orthodontic treatment. So again, the final finish of the patient. Of course, you can see a little bit of incisal chips. So that has to be fixed after the uh, end of the treatment. So this is the uh, post uh, uh, treated case uh, with the help of, and you can see a beautiful smile and uh, the pre and the post comparison of the intraoral features of the patient. 
We tried to match the midline, we tried to maintain, there was no much anchorage loss in these patients and the molar lesions has been very well uh, stabilized. So, so that's the pre and the post uh, extra oral photos of the patient. And she got a good de decent result. So his brother, what we did for his brother, we didn't complicate much. We just did a simple two by four appliance. Uh, just do what is required for him. So that's what has been planned. Little boy. So we just, so that you can see he got a lot of missing, uh, uh, the, he's in a pattern of uh, a normal eruption of tea. So what we did is we just, so you can see he is uh, always he's in a let mix a dentition with all the premolars and can I to still clear out. So we did a simple uh, two by four appliance. So which is bonding up the four of the incisors of the two molars. So, and we given a little sleep to avoid some kind of trauma. He was in a, for a treatment of maybe like six months like that. So we have been jumped three visits. And later what we did just debonded. So we want to see like how the uh, nature is doing its job if we try to unlock the mandible and try to put the teeth in a proper position. So this case has been observed for a period of six months. Then again, we observed for a period of one year. So this is the review of the patient after uh, one year. There was no retainers. You can see that very nicely. Uh, when, we, when we tend to leave the uh, teeth in an uh, ideal facial balance, so you don't need much of the retainers. So that's what we primarily focus here. Uh, we don't uh, give retainers for every single uh, patient in the college. We try to focus to put the patient on a good facial balance and try to uh, place the teeth on a proper uh, incisal or uh, in a angulation, which is going to give us a better result. So you can see how the, the change has been happened in his mouth. Of course, he got a little bit of rotated premolar on one side, which he is not, uh, Fine with that. So this guy is happy with that. So you can see the, the changes of his uh, patients. So we, we do a lot of observation here in Oman because uh, we, uh, since it is the only dental college here, we get a lot of uh, uh, patient follow up is very quite good here. So we have a lot of uh, follow up cases for a period of eight years, nine years, even sometimes we have follow up 10 years simply because the patients, the locals stay here uh, except the, the expat. This is one of the patient. Uh, which I always uh, show in most of the presentation. Of course, this was treated during my postgraduate period in Down Karim. So this is a very interesting case to see how you uh, play with the uh, changes of your, uh, or I would say how you uh, avoid the malocclusion. What is the problem for the malocclusion? If you tend to avoid what kind of changes you can expect out of the periodontal problems. So, so you can see the very case, simple case where it's a deep white. Uh, we can see it very nicely. It's purely because of a uh, uh, traumatic bite. So which is causing a gingival problem and you can see a severe, severe gingival trauma on the lower canines as well. So the plan was to treat only a non-extraction. Of course, the, the central need to be removed because it was uh, it is a single tooth extraction, I would say. So the treatment has been started as a simple non-extraction. Not much of periodontal uh, therapy has been involved uh, except an initial uh, uh, oral prophylaxis has been carried out. And the objective is to avoid the trauma and uh, ask the nature to help us in this uh, scenario. So that's what has been happened with the bite was trying to correct and we are trying to close the space. And same way on the lower, we are trying to um, correct the bite. So which lead to a uh, better occlusion of the patient, the pre and the post, you can see good amount of uh, changes on the gingival region simply because you are not uh, moving the tooth uh, tooth away from the uh, gum margin you are trying to bring them inside which help you to develop the uh, bone formations so that is the trauma which is relieved and which is helping to develop the uh, better occlusion of the for the patient yeah so this is an uh, orthovaya kind of unrelated case and this is again a simple case where the referred from a periodontist for a frenal attachment problem so very simple case. So case deals of a uh, money child of 14 years, two year, two months old. So she got a midline diastema, classic case of a midline. So you can see a good amount of a uh, thick frenal attachment. The case has been treated with a uh, uh, simple on extraction case. So we didn't uh, involve much of an extraction. The upper and lower has been bonded. Uh, again, the sequence of wire has been uh, followed. So which is the upper and the lower, the, the night wire has been placed. 
and uh, you can see the space has been closed. So then uh, we uh, did a simple uh, phrenectomy procedure on the child. So it has been replaced. And we close the caps to this main reason to uh, maintain the stability of your, uh, the midline diastema. And of course, most of the midline diastema, the problem is that is tend to relapse. So we always tend to do a uh, fixed retainer and always better to do a phrenectomy at the end of the treatment rather than the beginning of the treatment to avoid the problem of the uh, scar tissue formation, which might uh, impair your orthodontic treatment. So and again, the pre and the uh, post of the same particular child. Yeah. So now, we, do you tend to see open bite cases? We do a lot of open bite cases, you know, one as a child because they used to have a lot of uh, different kinds of a habit. So, which is a severe problem, we do sometimes with the uh, with the young child. Uh, this is a very interesting case of a finger sucking. This is a young Omani child again. It is referred from a pedo. We can see that this is referred whenever we look into that, we always tend to find that where it is going wrong. So, and of course, you can see that the open bite is not very symmetrical in nature, which really asked us a question. So, is it really a thumb sucking or a finger sucking? So, then we need to go detail to the history to find out what is uh, what causes these small occlusions. And the patient has been. Uh, told she used the habit of uh, finger sucking. So the, she used to suck her finger, so which leads to an unilateral uh, cross bite or an unilateral open bite. The patient has been put again on a simple uh, tongue rip, which is a fixed in nature. So along with the two by four appliance, just only an upper arch treatment. So that is a post treatment of the same child after the treatment. Again, we didn't put any kind of a retainer, this is follow up after uh, a period of two years. So you can see the development of the canines as well. Yeah, so this is the pre and the post of the same child. Uh, we, we, we do a lot of interceptive cases and we do sometimes eruption problems. We, we get a lot of uh, crazy number of impacted uh, canines and a lot of uh, submerged tooth. So it's very, uh, we see quite a lot. And uh, most of our time we, we work quite a lot with the surgeons because uh, they play a good role in it. So we, we get an eruption problem because of you know the basics of your uh, over-retained primary tooth, which is the most common problems. And uh, always it is referred from a dentist or sometimes it is because of the delayed eruption. So which is also can lead to a lot of uh, problems. So you are going to see one of the patient related to both. And sometimes you can see an ankylosed primary tooth. So which can also cause an uh, malocclusion problems, yeah. So how, uh, on ideally speaking, at what age you need to refer a patient to an orthodontist? Uh, according to American Association of Orthodontics, you need to have an opinion with an orthodontist at the age of seven. Uh, but again, how many of you are so generously or seriously looking into the tooth charting of an every single child visit your clinic? Because mal occlusion is not something uh, is uncommon. It is common, but the question is whether you can able to uh, identify what kind of a malocclusion the patient is going to get when they become uh, older. Do you have your uh, knowledge to identify, to refer to a particular uh, uh, specialty to uh, reduce a malocclusion or I would say to reduce the severity of your uh, malocclusion. So this is one of the child which was treated before. So where you can see the patient is having a submerged tooth which is causing a problem. So again, uh, which is a classic case of a submerged tooth. And it has been advised to extract it. And the patient has been put on a, a simple holding arch. And this is a hybrid, a hybrid appliance where you try to correct it with the help of a semi-fixed removal appliance because you can able to rotate your premolar, which is going to help you to erupt your uh, uh, permanent, uh, permanent premolar. So this is a small intervention you do so that you can help to get your uh, premolar into positions, yeah. So this is the pre and the, uh, the post-treated intervention of the particular uh, interceptive case. So now you have a very, uh, sometimes we're getting a uh, 15 years old, she's a 15 years and two months old Egyptian female. So she got a class three incisor relationship, but instantly she got a good uh, one supplemental tooth, which is next to her lateral incisor. So the treatment plan was to extract the supplemental tooth and try to get a uh, better result for her. So uh, as you are aware of the fact in oral biology, you must have studied about the Butler's field theory, so which always says the teeth which is more distal to the midline is 
supposed to be the wrong one or an extra one. So these particular patients we have a supplemental tooth, which is the wrong one. So we, uh, we need to extract the supplemental tooth so that you can able to match your midline, get your relationship pop up. So the, we extracted the supplemental tooth. In our case, you can see that the lateral incisor, are the two laterals we got it. So we need to remove the lateral, which is more distal. So which is considered to be the wrong one or an extra one. So we need to remove that. And uh, the simple orthodontics mechanics has been followed. The space closure, which is going to correct your midline as well. We can see the, the changes happening on the midline uh, as we go up on the wires. And the final spacing has been closed with the uh, um, power chain. You can see they're very nice midline matching of a case and the lower and upper we put it on a fixed retina for a particular case. So this is a uh, final extra oral features of the patient, very beautiful smile. And you can see the pre and the post finishing. Uh, we spend a lot of time on uh, finishing the case. We don't rush our cases to finish. Sometimes our finishing takes uh, longer than maybe sometime six months or sometime eight months or even sometime a year uh, because that is where uh, that is where your result is going to be uh, determined how long it's going to be stable. Yeah. So the, again, the same child, the pre and the post extra oral photos. Yeah. So now do you come across ectopic eruption? Ectopic eruption, yes, we do a lot of times you come across an ectopic eruption. So where ectopic eruption is something abnormal, where it is supposed to come in particular place, it comes in a different place, we get that. And it is purely because of your delayed exfoliation of your deciduous teeth, the presence of your superendemic teeth or sometimes cyst, or sometimes the prolonged retention of a premature extraction of a deciduous teeth with or without space maintenance. This is again a very beautiful case which uh, which has been reviewed for a quite long time in Dubai. So uh, she got an, uh, by looking at her face, of course, you can say she's heading towards a class two malocclusion. Uh, and, but along with that, she got an um, impacted uh, one one. So that's how the can, uh, the incisor looks like. You can see the typical uh, horizontal of a canon, which classically, uh, sorry, the, uh, the central incisor, which you can classically see it over there. And of course, an OPG. The plan was to do an uh, exposure. So that's what has been planned and try to get into alignment. Of course, when you want to do that, invariably we know this patient is going to have a uh, functional appliance because uh, of her uh, defective uh, jaw growth and later may be treated as a non-extractured fixed appliance. Uh, but I compiled all of them for a period of maybe like six years of a treatment plan, which I just put it in one single child, um, one single side. So you can see there the canyon has been, the, sorry, the, uh, the central has been exposed. Uh, the, it has been attached to the wire. So we given some little bend here and there to avoid the, the gingival offsets. So it has bought into alignment. We can see there very classically the patient is a class two. So then the patient has been put on a uh, kind of a modified uh, activator appliances. So she was an activator. She was buying it really well. So her uh, functional problem has been solved. So then followed by that, she was been treated with them. Uh, fixed appliance, both upper and lower and uh, with the settling wires and uh, elastics. So, and this is the, uh, the final result of the patient. And of course, since it is an uh, impacted uh, central, you can see there is a defect on your gingival margin. So, which is when compared to the, uh, the next tooth, you can see it very clearly, there is some kind of a deficiency. And this is a long follow, you can see that. So, uh, most of the time, uh, sometimes you should be lucky enough to follow up your own cases so that you can able to, these cases are most close to eight or nine years of follow-up, uh, which has been uh, followed and we can able to see what kind of a result we can give to a child, even though you intervene at a young age and you end up in treating them when they become uh, older as well. So we have three intervention has been happened or we can say four intervention has been happened with an impacted, with an exposure, with a functional appliance and a fixed appliance and you get a, the best possible result for the patients. So just to conclude, it is uh, always, it is better to recognize the malocclusion. And uh, for this particular conclusion for this case is disimpact the, the problem in relation to the, uh, where is the problem you need to culprit, which I call it as an uh, impacted uh, central incisor, level and line follow, and always believe in doing uh, right force levels. Yeah. So this is a very beautiful saying, which always uh, happens in everyone's life from a very famous saint. So he always says, if you don't come across any problem, you can be sure that you are traveling the wrong path. 
So, which is a very good saying. And of course you can see that in your life it happens. So just a small steps in of your story of your tooth movement is what I believe in. So your tooth movement can be done by a removal of lines, can be done by a fixer of lines. It can be done by the patient as well by doing all habit. Your tooth movement respond only to the forces. It can be differentiate all the both. So it's all depend upon how well you play with your forces. So that's how you are going to get your uh, result. And again, you need to balance yourself where you are uh, standing on treating your cases. Always, uh, you need to weigh your balance, which is most beneficial and which is not beneficial. And uh, this always happens only with uh, experience. It is not going to happen uh, when you complete your uh, master's program. So you need to be patient enough to develop your skills. Even uh, uh, I won't claim myself as one of the great clinician. Of course, most of you won't agree with some of my treatment plan, but it is the way you learn every day in your life. So learning is always a uh, process which is happened. That's why we call ourselves as uh, practitioners. Yeah. So what are the rules you might need to follow as a take home message for you? So evaluate the tooth movement in every visit, which is very important. Your biomechanics will change every visit. So if you are not able to identify your uh, problems in every single visit, which means uh, you are not able to see them. Uh, so which again, basically ask your question back, uh, how well, how much of time you spend with your every single uh, patient in your care. So we have a very strong policy in the college. Our appointment is kind of fixed for every single patient. Uh, we spend for close to 40 minutes for every single patient, uh, whether uh, that's allow us to sit and think and evaluate and take a good photograph and even some kind of changes required, we do that. And uh, choosing a right appliance and always tend to keep your appliances as simple as possible. And uh, the most important thing is follow up your deep order cases. That is the only way where you are able to uh, learn from your mistakes. And of course, most uh, important is knowing your own limitation because that vary from people to people. So that you will be the better person to judge what you are good at. Yeah. The success is a result of perfection, hard work and learning from failure, loyalty and the persistence. So which is very important. And uh, that's my uh, clinic in Seychelles. I am not a great uh, social person. I am a social person, but I am not into social media. So we keep it that way simply because uh, we do our work very quietly and uh, simply. And we don't have much of an, uh, banners and posters to reach our clinic. So you can see there are very little uh, small uh, poster to show that is the tentacle. So that's my beautiful team. We have uh, three dentists working there. So, and we have a lot of good assistant who is supposed to do a good care there. Yeah. So you can reach by this following email, which was in at uh, gmail.com. And uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me now. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you, Dr. Vishwa, for an excellent uh, presentation. Um, Actually, uh, you finish within time, which is uh, very much in uh, concept with international speakers who are very, very experienced on how to manage time as well. So let me thank you again for your presentation. And I would like to uh, tell uh, all the uh, participants, if you have questions, uh, you have two uh, ways of uh, uh, forwarding questions. One thing is you can uh, type it so that we can forward the questions to uh, Dr. Vishwa, or else uh, you can straight away um, unmute uh, your screen by holding the space bar a little longer, and then you can straight away ask the questions. I got so, one question here, maybe I can answer that. The oh, yeah. last one is the uh, final wire you do or a two by four appliance. Of course, uh, we See, but again, when you are using your MBT appliance, we always go for a final wire as a 1935. So we always go for the final wire. We don't uh, skip the mechanics, yeah? We always go for the final wire as a 1935. Any other questions? Uh, I would like to give five more minutes, um, or I would rather like to ask uh, Dr. Vishwas time, five more minutes. If you would, uh, That's okay, no problem. <laughs> okay, thank, thank you. you.
You are back from the oak, I think, so you're back to home now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Sorry, uh, uh, this is some uh, DYD is uh, waving his hand. Sorry. Uh, thank you, Sri Ramavan. Uh, on behalf of the Commonwealth Dental Association, can I thank Vishwa, my good friend Vishwa, and Sri Ramavan and Sunda and Suresh and Sri Lanka Dental Association for hosting this uh, excellent lecture, excellent webinar. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Prof. Thank you for your uh, uh, kind advice always. His yeah. experience is not even my age. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, he has been gracious enough to introduce. Yes, yes always, always I take prof advice. Uh, there was one question from somebody, I think again from Dr. Vijay. More yeah, breathers, Vijay. how do you manage? Yeah, this is uh, something very tricky thing to do. Again, you need to go back to your... Uh, uh, back to the patient to find out what causes the mouth break. Always, uh, I ask uh, question back, you know, like what causes this malocclusion? So if mouth breathing is because of any kind of an uh, adenoid problems, so it is better to address it. So then you can able to control the habit. So otherwise, when you tend to do it, you won't get a uh, result because you are keeping the cause as it is. Yeah. So always you need to find uh, what causes that actually. Uh, I've got uh, one question for you. Uh, this is regarding the practical aspects. Now, say for example, if you encounter uh, teeth which has been treated uh, using MTA okay. uh, instead of uh, conventional root canal treatment, yeah. uh, is there uh, any difference in the way that you are applying the force? Uh, no, actually, uh, this is a very uh, good question, but I always I ask this question to my postgraduate, actually. <laughs> so it is like, what I tell them is, I don't, uh, orthodontics based on bone, not on tooth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So even if your tooth is uh, non-vital dead, and as long as the periodontium is bone and healthy, so we play with the bone. So the tooth is, uh, it doesn't matter to us. <laughs> So it doesn't really, uh, it doesn't matter whether it is an endodontic related, it can be moved, yes, as long as the bone and the periodontium is healthy, so we can uh, do that, yeah. Okay. Uh, any other questions from participants? As I told you, you can always press the bar and hold it for two or three seconds and uh, then uh, your microphone will be unmuted. It looks like everybody is clear with it. Yeah, that's right. So uh, on behalf of Sri Lanka Dental Association, uh, I would like to uh, thank you, Dr. Vishwa, for dedicating his time or rather taking time off from his busy schedule and giving us this excellent uh, lecture as well as uh, this insight into the multidisciplinary treatment in orthodontics, especially in orthodontics. And I would like to thank uh, Professor D. Y. D. Samarikrama for introducing me to uh, Dr. Vishwa and uh, organizing in such a way. And uh, Commonwealth Dental Association, uh, getting it to touch with uh, Sri Lanka Dental Association and make it, it a very successful webinar. Now, our uh, next, uh, or rather the next segment of our webinar series will be on uh, last Sunday of this uh, month, that's on 29th. And uh, it will be a consultant, uh, restorative dentist, uh, all the way from Aberdeen, UK. And uh, 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 it will be a, an interesting topic as well. Uh, obviously, the topic will be on uh, restorative dentistry. I would like to invite all of you uh, to participate in that web webinar as well and you know, widen your horizons in this uh, difficult time. So thank you very much for everybody. And uh, good night. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank, thank you. Thank you.